You're watching BCTV, Brantford's Community Access Station. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another special edition of Around the Town of Brantford with Henry and Frank. I'm Frank Tuhill, standing here at the Stony Creek Town Dock. It's a beautiful August Sunday, 2020, and a high tide with a lot of Thimble Islands to visit and explore. And that's what we're going to do for you today here on Around the Town of Brantford with Henry and Frank. Now, standing right behind me over here is the Thimble Islands boat. This is a special boat, it's a special taxing district that the islanders formed a few years ago and it's to provide them with ferry service out to their islands. There's quite a few islands and we'll be talking with Captain Mike Infantino on the Sea Mist in just a few moments. He's going to tell us all about the islands as to how many there are, how many with homes on them. I believe there's about 20 islands with homes on them. And this is, of course, the time of year when they're all inhabited. I believe all the homes, all the islands are completely uninhabited all winter. Right now you're looking out at uh, Stony Creek Harbor. It's a beautiful, hot August Sunday morning. I'm standing on the uh, Stony Creek Dock. Now, the Board of Finance and the RTM have both, uh, they've both approved some improvements to this area. I believe the, the, the pier which floats uh, is going to be completely uh, replaced. And I, so that's coming up. Uh, I believe the work on that is going to start this winter. Okay, I'm with Captain Justin Infantino. Now, you're the son of Mike, right? Yes. Okay, some questions for you about, you know, the boat. Uh, would you tell us as to how did you get involved in, in this? Or, you know, how did your family get involved in, in operating the Sea Mist? Uh, my great uncle started this in 1960. And my father, Mike, took it over in 78. And then I was working for him as a child, being a first mate and then finally getting my captain's license, and now I've been a captain for about 15 years. It's a great boat, you know, and uh, I mean, people speak so highly of the trip and, you know, the, the, uh, the, the talk. I mean, the islands are so interesting, right? It's just a fascinating, I mean, there's, there's no place like it, right, Justin? Right, there's a great history. Um, there's folklore out here about Captain Kidd the Pirate, and it's just a great experience right here in Connecticut. It's true, you know, because right, this is the only place on both shores of Long Island Sound where there's a group of islands, right? Yes, this is the only area along the Connecticut coast where there's a, a larger group of islands before you get up to Maine. You know, this is what I've heard, that people come here like to moor overnight in the thimbles just because there's, there's good scenery. I mean, the rest of Long Island Sound, both shores are kind of boring they say they want to stay here overnight right because of the islands yeah well the islands are amazing themselves there's some beautiful homes and properties out here plus it's a safe area to anchor you can get right in between the islands in pretty much any weather condition and be safe in here in the islands that's true so this storm that's coming right that th there could be some people moored here to, to get away from the storm right Yes, there could be some that come in to get in between the islands and be protected. All right. Um, just a few more questions because, you know, it's almost 10 o'clock. We're just about to go out on the, the sea mist, okay. speaking with Justin Infantino, the captain. It's going to be a great trip today, right? And it's high tide. Yeah, we've got a beautiful day. It's high tide. Getting in nice and close to a lot of the islands. Give you a good look. All right, just a couple more questions. So would you tell us about the thimbles having changed over the years? I mean, since you've been in these waters, what have you seen any changes on the islands? Oh, there's never any dramatic changes, I don't believe. We've had some new owners come and go. Many of the families have still been out here just passing their homes down generation to generation. Some new buildings, some fix, fixer-uppers, um, but overall I think we've pretty much kept it the same. Also, I wanted to know if there's a beer that's been named after this, you know, the, the Infantino family and the Seamist. Yes, Thimble Island Brewing. <laughs> 
made a beer uh, named after the sea mist and it was in honor of my father's 40th year uh, owning the business we wanted to celebrate his um, long history of running the business and turning it into what it is today that's wonderful also um, I wanted to know how has lobstering changed is it coming back now I believe it's coming back very slowly but there's still not a great number of lobsters out here and also my final question would you give us would you give us the names of some of the stars that you've carried over the years? I mean, it, it, is, when, you know, it, it, any famous people? Um, I haven't had any famous people come out on the boat with myself. I'm sure my father's had a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, well, thanks a lot, Justin, for answering my questions, and we're looking forward to another great tour on the Sea Mist. Okay, around the town of Brantford with Henry and Frank continues. We're on the top deck of the Sea Mist. It's going to be piloted today by Mike Infantino's son, Justin Infantino. We're up here on the top deck. In just moments from now, this whole area is going to be filled with passengers. As I said, there's only three trips today. They're only, they're only running three trips three days a week because of the coronavirus. There's not too much traffic today in the Stony Creek Harbor, but it's a beautiful day to be out here. It's already cooler up here than it is on the mainland. I'm going to walk around over here now and um, show you where the captain sits. Oh, also, any questions you might have, you contact uh, seamistcruises.com. The phone number is 203-488-8905. You've got to make reservations. You can call now for next weekend. Uh, so anyway, this is where Captain Justin Infantino is going to lead the uh, trip today. And you're going to be hearing him talk about the, the really the wonderful stories. Captain Kidd, as he said, the pirates, legends, celebrities, all out here on the, the magnificent Thimble Islands off Stony Creek in the town of Brantford, Connecticut. So s stay with us as around the town of Brantford with Henry and Frank and also with Lee Pond. She's with us today. Lee, of course, is Henry's wife. So it's going to be great, right, Lee? It should be a lot of fun. It's always a beautiful ride. Absolutely right. All right, I'm up here with Captain Justin Infantino. We're just leaving the Stony Creek Dock. We're headed out. It's cooler already. We're going to hear all about the fascinating history and legends of the Thimble Islands and off Stony Creek and Branford. The seas are really nice and calm today. Beautiful high tide. The water temperature is around 78, I understand, which is, to me anyway, that's a uh, record high. Yeah, it's very warm for this time of year. Yeah, and and the reason for that is because it was fairly it was fairly warm over this winter, right, Justin? Warm over the winter, and then the high temps that we've had now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome aboard the Sea Mist. Welcome to the Thimble Islands. I'm Captain Justin. We have Abby and Kendall on as our first mates today. If you need anything while we're out, in case of an emergency, your life jackets for downstairs are located inside the seats on either side of the engine box. Upstairs, all the way forward in the box here next to me, and we have two life rafts at the back with the stern of the boat. The bathroom, or head area, all the way forward, just past the bar. Behind the bar, we have cold refreshments for sale. As soon as the crew gets a moment, they'll be around with some choices from the bar so you don't have to leave your seats. The Thimble Islands were discovered in 1614 by a young Dutch sailor, Adrian Block. We're about to go around 25 inhabited islands, 95 homes, over 100 families out here. As of yet, there are no year-round residents. These are all summer homes. Our first island off to your right side is Wheeler's Island. Purchased by Frank Wheeler in 1885, it remained in his family's hands until the summer of 1999. Wheeler's Island is our closest island to shore, currently on the market at $3 million.
We've got some of the geese swimming around out here. As you're looking around, take a look off to our left side at a portion of Stony Creek that cannot be seen except from the water. Take a look at some beautiful stonework out here. Everything around us is pink granite. Pink granite's been used in many of our more famous buildings and monuments throughout our nation. Grant's tomb, the Lincoln Memorial, the West Point Monument, even the base of the Statue of Liberty and many more. It's all pink granite from around here. Yeah, this is what's known as Flying Point. It's owned by Mr. Jensen now, who bought it from Francine Sears. Beautiful spot. Off to our left side, the southern shorefront of Stony Creek. It's many Victorian homes coming into view. We're headed out to our next island. The home on top at this end was at one time owned by someone affiliated with the original P.T. Barnum and Bailey Circus. Tom Thumb, their famous little person, used to come out here to spend his summers. A small portion of the house still papered with very old and priceless circus posters. into view off to your left or port side. This is Bear Island. There were quarrying operations on Bear Island that gave us stone for the old Saybrook and Hartford bridges along the Connecticut River. Years later, Bear Island was turned into a public picnic island for some time. Today, Bear Island and most of the islands are privately owned. in nine feet of water on this side of Cutting Two Island. We always try and point out a few of the depths out here to show you just how quickly things will change, especially for any mariners on board sailing through the thimbles. Please watch your charts very closely out here. Another look at Cutting Two Island off to your right side. Our next little island off to your right side is Dogfish Rock. Granted to Albert Mallory in 1871, it consists of just three quarters of an acre. Just the right size lawn, only a few minutes to mow. In just a little while, we're gonna show you the mansion at the opposite end of Elton's or Davis Island coming into view on our right side. Take a look at the home at this end of the island. A small portion of this house was once the boathouse and workshop. The boats used to go in and out right underneath it. You can see where it's partially walled in today. The little green shed houses the generator for backup electricity. This is one of nine islands that has electrical power from shore. That black pipe on the rocks, a freshwater supply line from shore. 40% of our islands get fresh water from shore. Others have holding tanks to catch rainwater from the roof and some still carry it out. Battery, generator, and solar are used for electrical power, bottled gas for cooking and refrigeration, and almost everyone has hard line telephone service. But not everyone has a deck area 
like the one coming into view up on top, complete with their swimming pool and jacuzzi, because they can. We'll show you the other mansion out here on Davis Island in just a few minutes. Consisting of some 32 homes, Money Island was once a self-sustaining community, having a church, store, post office, hotel, even a two-lane bowling alley at one time. Today, these are all private homes. You may notice they've got a couple of diving boards out here. Nice swim platform. Well, it was in the middle of the 1800s when a young couple was married there in the chapel on Money Island. After their wedding ceremony, they got into a small rowboat and rowed themselves out to this little island on our left just to spend their honeymoon. What a nicer spot to have it. Well, as fate would have it, the bride's mother had to row on out just to make sure they were okay. Staying a little too long, she fell asleep. When she did, the newlyweds took her boat, their own boat, and they left her there. It's been mother-in-law's island ever since. <laughs> this is the house on stilts. And what you might refer to as an island is Exton's Reef nearly covered at a normal high tide. Just look at the dark line right across the top of the rocks. That's our normal high tide mark. Exton's Reef, a house on stilts. Outer Island is our only island open to the public. You are welcome to come out here and visit. The Thimble Island Ferry Service runs on an hourly schedule right from the dock where we left from. Pack a little lunch, come out and visit Outer Island. You are welcome to swim here at the beach, off the dock, or just come out here, unplug for a little while, and enjoy the quiet. Outer Island. Captain Kidd's Island, to your left or port side. Here atop High Island, Captain Kidd could see much of Long Island Sound. Watching as every ship approached, he would have complete control here in the main channel. Jumping on every ship that passed, he would take gold and silver. The Islanders continue this tradition today. They call themselves the Buccaneers. Some of the homes still painted black. They occasionally fly the Jolly Roger, who's called the Crossbow. Off to our left side, Captain Kidd's Hidden Harbor. Some pieces of treasure were actually found out here in the islands. The majority of Captain Kidd's treasure found on Gardner's Island, some 30 miles to the east. Some say the rest of his treasure is still here. Our next island is coming into view off to your left or port side. This is West Crib. West Crib's been remodeled over many years now. The first little building here was a tool shed and workshop. Today, a beautiful guest home. The pointed roof was the old generator house. Today, they have electricity from shore. That little building, just for the kids. And we've got a beautiful main house out here. Some beautiful gardens throughout the island. Where the trees end, you'll notice a set of stairs coming down to the rocks. Those stairs once led to a footbridge. The footbridge connecting West Crib on our left over to East Crib coming into view on your right side. The bridge was destroyed in a storm. There are still two granite columns right underwater. Off to your right side, East Crib. There was a home out here built back in the 50s. It remained here until about five years ago when the island sold. The new owner tore the old house down, started over. And now we're just waiting to see what's going to happen next. New home, go back on the market. You never know. Also off to our left side, you'll notice this large industrial building. 
This is the Tilcon Marine Facility. Okay. Tilcon quarries gravel about five miles away up in North Brantford. They bring all of the stone down here by train, load it onto those barges, which are then shipped across to Port Jefferson, Long Island. Also off to our left side, our next two islands are Lewis Island with the red roof, settled in 1858. Belden Island coming into view with the blue house, settled in 1864. And off to your right side, you'll get another look at Rogers Island. Beautiful walkway up to the mansion. Some more of their gardens. The docking facilities here. The families come out here and have some great picnics and get togethers, swimming, fishing just enjoying their little piece of the rock. Frisbee Island today is a nesting island for the birds. You'll see the seagulls out here. Any seagulls with light gray wings are the herring gulls. Black wings are the great black backs. The smaller all gray or brownish colored seagulls are the newborns of the season. Frisbee Island. Off to your left side, this is Jepson Island. The home here was built nine feet above the mean high tide. Building code established after the 38 hurricane. Today, if they were to rebuild, they would start around 18 feet above the mean high tide. Jepson Island recently sold for right around $700,000. Okay, that concludes our tour here on the Sea Mist of the Stony Creek Thimble Islands. A great tour given to us by Captain Justin Infantino. Thank you for your hospitality on board. Everybody was so friendly and what a great trip. Thank you very much. It's nice to have you guys out here. And uh, hopefully we'll get some more people down here coming out to see the islands. Yes, absolutely. Anybody with questions, if 203 488 8905. You have to make reservations due to the coronavirus pandemic. Yes. Yep, we're trying to do everything by uh, reservation and we're running at half capacity just to keep everybody socially distanced for the time being. It's important, yeah. And also uh, check out the website, seamistcruises.com. Thanks again, Justin. It was great. Thank you for coming. So for Lee Pond, Henry Pond, I'm Frank Tuhill. Until next time, stay with us for more programs here at Channel 18, BCTV, around the town of Brantford with Henry and Frank. Until next time, I'm smiling. Goodbye.